Hello everybody, this is Chaplain Anthony Kelly. Today I want to talk to you about a true story. And it was much like a horror story for me in my life. But it happened to me back in around the year 2000 when I was a civilian pastor in a southern city. And it was a extraordinary time of being able to help somebody out of trauma, but also experience that which was demonic, that which was evil, that which was dark in the community around us, but also supernaturally as well. So I pray that you stay for the entire video as you listen to me ramble on about this story. And whether you believe it or not, I swear it happened to me and it is the truth. Now this, like I said, was in a Southern city back in 2000. Now, I was doing premarital counseling with a young couple who came to me and said that we, they wanted me to marry them. And I agreed. And I said, well, you have to undergo about six or seven premarital counseling sessions to where I'll take them through the biblical process of what the Bible says is marriage and tips and that I've learned along the way in my long marriage with my wife. And so I wanted to help this couple. And one of the things I picked up uh, and tools I picked up was to be able to bless them and teach them to bless each other. And that is to lay hands on someone's head and just say a blessing. Well, I taught the husband, I was trying to teach the husband to lay hands on his wife, just on, gently on her head to say a blessing. You know, honey, I love you. You're awesome. You're wonderful. Uh, I just want our marriage to last, you know, on and on and on, right? And so he had some help, difficulty, and he wanted me to show him how? So I laid gently with all the permission, the groom and the bride, the permission just to lay gently my hand upon her head. And I started praying blessings. And as soon as I started, she tried to hit me and I didn't know what to do. So I said it back. So what's going on? And she said, what are you talking about? And the groom's like with his mouth open said, why'd you try to hit him? And she's like, no, I didn't. And you know, it went back and forth for a second. And so, okay. So I said, calm down, let's try to do this again. So I did it again, and the same result happened. She tried to hit me, literally with her fist, tried to punch me in the face. And so I stopped this, and, uh, and I said, okay, let's do some counseling. And so I'd start asking her questions and start going into her history. And come to find out she had dissociative identity disorder, which is the old diagnosis is MPD, multiple personality disorder, but she had DID. On the extreme level. Now, we all dissociate. If you can say that there's a spectrum of dissociation, most people are on this side to where they daydream or you're zoning out while you're driving your car and you miss your exit, especially you live in a pot, listening to a podcast. It's happened to me a couple times. And so we all do that to one extent or another. But somebody who's experienced extreme trauma in their life, especially in childhood, there is more extreme dissociation. Not only amnesia, where you don't remember chunks of your childhood uh, or certain ages or certain events, but then that you should, for example, birthdays and anniversaries, all that stuff, but also different chunks. And on the extreme level, say, for example, a three, and this is what happened with her. When she was three years of age, she would have sex with dad. Dad would rape her. And not only rape her, dad and mom and the entire family were in a satanic ritual uh, a cult. And so she was an SRA, satanic ritual abuse victim. And she had multiple personalities or alternate personalities. She would have this identity disorder where she would dissociate and she would become somebody else. She actually formed a different personality. So if her name was, for example, Christy, and she formed a, a, uh, Sarah, or a Susie, or an Ann, she would have these different personalities. And each personality was able to deal with something different in her aspect. And because she was brought up in the occult from early childhood all the way up, from infancy all the way up, she had a whole system of different identities, personalities that she would answer to. And so they took care of the task for her. It's conceivable, uh, that she, her whole body even was controlled by these identities. Because some people have claimed that they have, uh, females have periods all month long because each personality is on their own period. 
And so when they come up, they have a period and the different one has its own period. And so it could be a month long period. Uh, our body is controlled by the mental stability within inside of us or instability within inside of us. Trauma can manifest in the body. In fact, if you read the book, The Body Keeps Score, it talks all about that. Now, for this young woman, she was brought up in the occult and she had all these identities which we were able to talk to, to try to bring healing. Now, there was something else lurking in the darkness behind those identities and that was demonic activity. Now, if you ever encounter this, pastors or chaplains or anybody else, identities are not demons. Some may foolishly think that, but it's not the case. Now, an identity can have a demon. It can be possessed, if you will, uh, by a demon but or controlled or influenced by demonic activity. And that darkness may be there, but not the person. The personality, the identity is not a demon. The demon may try to control them in some way. And so when you try to bring healing to that identity, the demon may pop up and do supernatural things, just like in the horror movies, right? Be able to not spin their heads and spit green pea soup vomit on you, but they will have supernatural strength, just like it's seen in the Bible. They can throw things. There's an influence of darkness and feeling that you get, kind of like Harry Potter, uh, that you get that darkness all around you. And you can feel it with a knife and cut it with a knife. And I've seen shadows move around in the room. I've seen stuff fly across the room uh, when I'm trying to do counseling and the demon pops up, as well as uh, supernatural stuff that happens. And healing is the most important part. Now, a great tool to, for this is EMDR, eye movement, desensitization, and reprocessing. EMDR is a great, great therapy and modality to be able to help people through that traumatic experience and bring some level of healing, as well as IFS therapy uh, or, or par and parts work to be able to help a person find that level of healing. Now, at one point, I took her to a psychologist and I paid the bill for it. And I even saw the psychologist myself and paid the bill and say, am I crazy? What's going on? And what he explained to me is he's seen this in his practice as well. And he couldn't explain it. But from a client-centered approach, he took the curious bystander approach to be able to learn from the client and ask them the important questions that he's not the expert in their life. They are the experts in the life. And it may sound fantastic. It may sound amazing. It may sound you know, all the adjectives you want to use, but it may sound so weird, so unbelievable, but you got to believe them, the client, to help them. You got to help them walk through it. Now, some psychologists and psychiatrists would say, oh, this this some sort of psychosis going on. You need to throw them, uh, lock them away in a mental institution somewhere and give them, dope them up with tons of meds, drown out the demons, if you will. Um, and this sometimes is very controversial, this whole topic of DID within the realm of psychology. But for me, I experienced this. It was real. Now, could I have been deceived? I highly doubt that. Uh, because all the level that what happened with this girl to be able to help her escape from the occult. Um, so I know that this stuff was real. I've seen experiences, all this with my own eyes. Now, you can believe me. You cannot believe me. That is your choice, your right not to believe me. But here, I'm just trying to point out that the darkness is real. The darkness is something that is trying to influence all of America, all the world today. And sometimes you may encounter that in therapy. You may encounter that with your client or your parishioner. You may encounter that with people that you come in contact with. And what do you do? What would you do, therapist, if you encountered this? What would you do, chaplain, if you encountered this? What would you do, pastor, if you encountered this? Would you label everything as demons and, and uh, just try to exercise everything out? Or would you try to help this person in their time of need to help them through and help them come out of the occult? And that's what I did. Started a little short ministry time of helping her, not only her, but others out of the occult as well. It was fruitful and beneficial, and I learned a lot about myself, learned a lot about the spiritual realm, learned a lot about psychology at the time. 
And so that spurred me on to go and get further degrees to learn more about this phenomenon, what is going on with people. So I hope this video has been beneficial to you. If it has, please like, subscribe, share it. And I pray God's blessing be upon you today. And I pray that God will use you for great and mighty works, great and mighty things to help bring health, healing, and wholeness in someone's life. God bless.